And here we go on the third episode of The Chirp. Aiden Doyle, Noah Johnson, episode three. And we're going to start the episode by picking up where we left off last week, talking about the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. And Aiden, go ahead, do your thing. Start us off. Well, I think one of the things we kind of brought up last episode was an idea of talking about current players who are bound for the Hall of Fame, you know, mm. who currently playing right now do we envision, you know, one day getting a plaque in Cooperstown. So I think that's where I guess if you want to leave or pick right back up there, I think that would be a Yeah. I think it'll be a good place to start back up again. We so, start there? Okay. Who's who are some guys you think right now playing active on rosters? And are we gonna do this with our I like to call them Nate regulations? Where he uh, Nate regulations. What are the Nate if regulations? You, if you, any player who's played f- under five years. So, for example, Harper and Trout, you can't include them because they're too early in their career. Well, I mean, I wouldn't put them in yet. But it, I mean, if, okay. you, if you want to, I mean, barring something. The the way catastrophic. I, the, I, I don't see any way they. The, the way I'm going to do it is players who already have the resume. But you do okay. you do your thing, but I'm, I'm going to just stick to players that I am convinced that right now, if they retired today, they would be in. Okay. And also, actually, it's a good thing you bring this, something like that up. Um, are we going to do what the Hall of Fame should be, or do you want to do it the way it is? Because... The way it should be, I think we both are in favor of a small Hall of Fame. I am, for yeah, sure. I am um, as well. But do you want to do it like that or the way it is, where it's, you know, maybe some players who are on, a, you know, the, the tier below the all time greats still get in? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. We'll, right, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm bringing up, so. Okay, yeah. Good. I, I, have, I have my list. That you have I've, your list, okay. Give me your uh, list. Constructed. I think, well, using our Nate regulations, mm. so people who have played on our five years, I only have eight players in Major League Baseball right now who okay. are on active rosters who, would, who I think are going to get make the Hall of Fame. And I think one of them maybe you would disagree with. Okay. As if, well, I, I don't say, I don't want to say disagree with. I think it would be the, you know, what it, or whether or not uh, they retired right now, they'd make it. I don't think he probably would, but okay, I think well, that, he would. that's fine. I might still, I, I'll probably still agree with you that I think he will get in. Okay. It, it's just when I make when I give you my my list, my short list. Okay, first up on the list, I guess we'll go alphabetically. Miguel Cabrera. I, I'd agree with that. I, I think there's no way at this point. I mean, he's one of the greatest hitters ever. Certainly, I guess. One one of if not the greatest hitter of our generation. So he's up there, up there with Pujols. Yeah, in terms well, of Pujols is all, Pujols is also on this list. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it is. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Um. So there are two of my eight. Uh, I only have two pitchers on the list right now, and those are uh, King Felix and Kershaw. Hmm. Let me. And I know you're a Mariners fan, so. Yeah, I. Hold on, give me give me a moment here. Kershaw and the problem with Kershaw right now is ineffectiveness in the postseason. He had a good postseason this past year. Yeah, he was all right, but here, well, let me take a look. Let me take a look here. For, I wouldn't put him on yet. I mean, oh, I would. His first dominant truly dominant year was his 2011. Right? 21-5, 228 ERA. Let's see, three Cy Youngs, five All-Star Games. An MVP? Yes. Career ERA of 2.43. You know, had a career of 1.03 as a starting pitcher. Well, I'm not saying that he won't be one, but right now... It's just, it, it, remember last week we talked about Hall of Fame years, right? Yeah. He's got one, two, three, four. He's got five right now. 
and one DC. Oh, I think well, it, would you do you want to count 20, 10, 13, yeah, 13, 13 and 10, 2.91 ERA. So I, you can make a case for that, sure. And the Dodgers weren't fantastic the, the in wins, 2010. I'd say the wins loss, win loss record isn't necessarily. No, I, obviously, I, it, when, when we go to Felix Hernandez in a second, two, that's certainly. I'd say 212 case. strikeouts, 1.18 uh, whip. I, well, I think no, that's a I, great year. No, it, it's a very good year. But again, even if you include that, that's six, right? Six, and actually, looking back to 2009, 2.79 ERA and 30 starts. How was he only 8-8? Eight and eight? She played on a mediocre Dodgers team. Get, give me one more year, and then he's in. Okay. I, th- I mean, I don't think there's any doubt, though, that he will be. Unless his arm falls off yeah. in spring training. But again, postseason, and the only thing that's keeping him out right now for me is the postseason. I know he had decent postseason, but if you look at the overall body of work, and he only made one start though. He had two this year. Oh, two starts. Excuse me, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Two starts. One. Okay, it's so a good yeah. postseason, but still overall two and six, four five nine ERA as an ace. So that's the only knock against him. For me, right now, yeah, but so, I think no. Honestly, I, although Los Angeles is going to have a have trouble changing that in that division, oh, if San Francisco this year. goes out and wins the division, you have you got to believe if San Fran- I, I think both wild cards come from the NL Central. Um, so uh, I could, mm, I that's going to. This is something that I'm, I I might disagree with you on. I just. Oh, I still don't think the Mets are going to make the playoffs. No, I do. So, I agree with that. So you think the Dodgers sneak in as a wild card? Maybe. And, I, and I think take out Ari- the Pirates. I think Arizona's a dark horse too. I'm not sold on Arizona yet. If, not listen, until listen, if that if that offense can mature this year, and they well, can yeah. manufacture runs around Goldschmidt. I say we'll see if Goldschmidt team. actually gets some recognition for. The recognition he right. deserves. And Pittsburgh, for me, while they're very good, I think playing in that division this year, even more than last year, will hurt them. Because you've got two of the best rotations in baseball in St. Louis and obviously Chicago, right? And they've got to play each, is it 18 or 19 times? 19. I, I don't think the, the Pittsburgh rotation stacks up this year. No, it doesn't. Not without Burnett. And no, and I don't think their offense stacks up either. Although it'd be interesting, they have a great farm system. So if they can get a Tyler Glasnow or a Jamison Tyon into the major league rotation, and he lives, or either one of them lives up to their, you know, I but, guess, but potential, then you're that's a very good rotation. Right, but and, and that's they, bank, you know, a twenty-one, twenty-two-year-old kid coming in and pitching like an ace yeah and what you know what we see with pitchers like that they'll be great for a couple starts and look untouchable and then they'll get shelled so i i i don't think pittsburgh will go away for good but this year might be kind of kind of a break year if you will because the yeah. national the national league overall is very good it's much better than the american league because you've got i think we did this last week but Nationals, Mets, um, Pirates, Cubs, Cardinals, Giants, Dodgers, and maybe the Diamondbacks are all contenders. Yeah. So I don't. I but this year maybe, and they do have some very good offensive players too. Young offensive players too. Yeah, that uh, the outfield of Polanco, Marte, and McCutcheon. I, the outfield is phenomenal. But I don't know. Th- th- um, th- that's something. Th- that's an interesting. That's gonna be an interesting race. Yes. Yes. All right, so... Wait, what, Continuing uh, with our Hall of Fame. Yeah, how, how do we get on to that? Oh, Kershaw, right, okay. All right, yeah. can, can, All right. Who, well, who is next on your list? Hernandez? Well, we've said we've said Cabrera, Hernandez, Kershaw, and Pujols are okay. four so far. I... Let me let me check check in on King Felix here. If he were pitching on a good team... Oh, yeah. No, I, 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 I don't think I disagree with you now. But 
because he's been he's been up since 05. I said the fact that he's still only 29 is it's scary, unbelievable. And the fact that he won a Cy Young with a 13 and 12 record. You know he was not yeah. an, he was not an All Star that year, which is bizarre. Yeah, he's got Joey Votto wasn't an All Star of the year. He won the MVP. Really? So, yeah, I remember that. I didn't realize that. Boy, I don't know how you're not an all-star with 227 ERA. Yeah, I, I'd put him in right now. I mean, he's been dominant. He had he was good prior to 09. He was an above-average pitcher. And then yeah. since 09, he's been great. I, I hope <laughs> I hope that team, because he's got a pretty decently long contract to stay in Seattle. Um Signed through 2019, I so I hope they can find a way to get him a playoff start. This could be this could be a year for them, but I feel like we say that every year, especially you being yeah. The Mariners. This this is a make or break year for them, really. Yeah. With, with, with the way well, Houston uh, is has been built up, they're going to dominate that division in the near future. So I don't know. We'll see. But I do agree. Um, I, I think Hernandez now is in. Yeah. Um, all right, two more. All right. Ichiro and McCutcheon. Ichiro for sure. Ichiro for sure. That's... No bias. Um, yeah. Maybe a little bit of bias. And McCutcheon. How old is McCutcheon? Do you know? 28. 28? Okay. Again, this is... I'm not 100% He's... sure on that. He's kind of in the category for me. I mean, his stats are phenomenal, but I I don't know. I I kind of in the same league as Kershaw. Like, give me give me another year. Yeah, I, that's another one of the examples of. Um, this is the one I thought. Oh, he's twenty nine. Twenty nine. Okay. Uh, yes. Well, analysis remains the same. Two ninety um, eight career batting average. 388 on base, 496 slugging. Averages 24 and 87. Home for home runs and RBI. Yeah, I mean, if you do that for it, those are Hall of Fame numbers. And it's certainly a Hall of Fame defensive player. So, you know, and. Yeah, He'll it, forever be associated with turning the Pirates around for sure. Yeah. Oh, yes. And you know, in his in the small sample size that we have of him um, playing the postseason, I mean, decent, better than decent stats. The three twenty one hitter. Granted, <laughs> two of those runs ended after one game, but that's just what I'll tell you. <laughs> the Pirates must despise this new playoff system more than any team because they <laughs> they get stuck in that one game playoff without an ace that's right they, that's right and um, they <laughs> they yeah they, they run into arguably the last two years two of the most dominant pitchers in their Baumgartner for, yeah for that time of the year and Arietta. Baumgartner and Arietta so they got lucky with Cueto the first time. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. That's something. And when we do our baseball preview, I think that will be something to to look for in Pittsburgh. Maybe not even this year, but in the future, is that they need an ace. I, think, I mean, that's what they have a lot of as far as prospects shows, pitchers. And I think Garrett Cole can get there. He definitely took a step last year or so. Mm-hmm. I think they're on their way to having an ace. It's just not there yet. Yeah. Oh, no, right now they have a lot of very good pitchers. but Or, well, yes. a lot of uh, certainly above average pitchers, but they don't have that one guy. Which, going back to that division, both St. Louis and Chicago have. Actually, Chicago has a few of them. Well, Cole's, Cole's very good, though. So, I think he's yeah. going to be... I think he'll be an ace. You think? This year? Yes. Like a he, so he was pitched. Remember, he started the All Star game last year. I, that's true. But what, what, so what, I, what I kind of a, like as long as he stays healthy. Like, is he a Wainwright, 
Kershaw Hernandez level ace or I think he's better than Cole Hamels I, I, well I, I would agree with that he, he is the better Cole He's better call. Okay, get off track. Do the Hall of Fame thing because that's what, what what we set out to do. Any other names? Because I've got a couple uh, that I might add. I have two more, and they're both catchers. Okay, well, you just took one of my uh, one of the guys I was going to mention. Molina and Posey. Okay. I, oh, I'll get to Posey, but because y- I saw an article, I believe it was ESPN wrote an article saying, "Is he already an all-time great?" Posey. Yes. Well, wait. Who, well, let me do Molina first because I have I certainly don't disagree with you on that one. In my opinion, Yadier Molina is the best player, best baseball player that I have ever seen watching, and I've only really been watching since '03, I guess, and only really comprehending what's been going on since '07. Or like being able to think critically about what's what's happening on the field. For him to, uh, first of all, phenomenal defensive catcher. One literally, arguably the greatest defensive catcher of all time. Unbelievable at throwing runners out. Not only stealing, but on pickoffs. I've never seen anyone pick off guys at first like he's like he did. Great with managing a pitching staff, especially. I, from Wainwright, Young pitchers. Yes, right. As said, from Wainwright and the older guys to Waka, remember him guiding through Waka and guiding Waka through the postseason in 2013. And the same, I guess, can be said now for Martinez. Um, so great with a diverse array of pitchers that St. Louis has had, both young and old. And for him to do all that and to always, really always knows what to do in every situation mentally yeah. and physically it's, and to do all that and still be an above average hitter I think is phenomenal like in his prime when he was healthy middle of the order I mean guy. look at 2012 that's 315 22 homers 76 RBI 373 on base percentage, slugging percentage over 500, 12 stolen bases, 28 doubles. You know, bat 300, in 08, batted 293 in 09, bat, had a down year in 2010, but then came back, batted 305 with 14 bombs, 315, 22 bombs, 319, 12 bombs. Do so, it. I mean, power and average. And doing all of that as being the best defensive player at his position. In what I yes. with the exception if, with the exception of maybe a hockey goalie. Actually well, I think a hockey goalie might be the only more like physically difficult position. And I wouldn't know because I don't play hockey. But certainly mentally and physically I think the hardest position to play in professional sports. So to be that dominant, the only, and I didn't really see him play, but I, the only guy I can think of who is really in his, a modern player, I guess, who is in at his Pudge. level. Yeah, that's right, Pudge, Ivan Rodriguez. So I absolutely agree with, uh, with Molina. I don't know if I agree with Posey. He will be. Well... Will be if he stays healthy, most likely. Well, Molina's going to stay healthy too. He's had had his had his just had his second thumb surgery. That's true, but I I think Molina's in now. I put Molina in now. Posey, I we can't count twenty eleven because he was injured. Had a great year in twenty ten. Twenty twelve hit three thirty six. Uh, one MVP. Yeah, one MVP. One that. Uh, uh, best best batting average in the in the National League. Also, twenty four home runs, one hundred hundred three RBI. And then every year since then's been very good. But again, five Hall of Fame years right now. He does with, with have three rings. I was gonna say he does have three rings, but he has the 
he benefits from from playing on a, a great team. Actually, here's an interesting question for Posey. But are they a great team without him? That that's kind of where I'm going with this. Was it Lincecum and Kane and Bumgardner who were great, or was it Posey who made them great? Well, I think they're all talented in their own right. I think but, Kane and Linscombe just kind of fell off the map. Kane ran into injury problems, and we'll get to see. I mean, Baumgartner's still a top-of-the-line pitcher, but the one constant throughout all of the Giants' success has been Buster Posey. Right. But I guess, uh, is are Linscombe, Kane, and Baumgartner, are they that dominant with let's say, just an average catcher. No. You don't think but so? I think you could say that. You don't... You, with the exception of maybe... Well, Kershaw, I guess, has an average catcher. But is Wainwright as good if he doesn't have Molina catching for him? Actually, uh, Wainwright might be an exception to the rule. Because, well, Felix Hernandez is. He's had, like, 70 different catchers. Same with Kershaw. Same with, yeah. Same with Kershaw. So, I don't know. I, 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 I kind of agree with you that I would put. I, I, I certainly give some credit to Posey, and you know he has he every time he's made the postseason in his career, he's won the World Series, and he has decent decent postseason stats. Yeah, I'm not like unbelievable. I've blown him out of the water, but. Yeah, but it's still still very good. I I don't know. I, I I'd say for him, if he stays healthy and he does it for a few more years, again, kind of the same thing as um, as um, who did we mention? McCutcheon. If he stays healthy, does it a few more years? Sure. But uh, again, like as I said at the beginning, I wouldn't put him in now. But like I wouldn't write him in at this moment, but you know, maybe maybe two or three years down the road, if he's still one of the best players at his position, then sure. He's a I think he will be, though. So. Mm-hmm. He's a 310 career hitter, actually. Yeah. Just looking yeah. right now. Best offensive catcher in the game. Mm-hmm. Alright, um... So those are my eight. Those are your eight. I don't, and obviously not including Jeter and Rivera because they're retired, well, I right? Have, say I have, you know, people who I think are going to come in in the future. Who, for example, I, I honestly wouldn't even induct anybody next year. That's my. I don't have anybody going in next year. Who is who? Who are the uh, um, the candidates right now? Bagwell. Um, or like Hoffman. The top. Bagwell Hoffman. Um, is there anybody new of note that you know of? Kind of, it's kind of weak, um, weak class. Um, well, Pudge. Pudge Rodriguez. Yeah. So you wouldn't put him in. Well, there's a steroid connection. He was named on the Mitchell Report. Yeah, I... And you know how I feel about that. Yeah, so. I, uh, I I, maintain that I would... The way I would do it is it should be the... I th- well, I Pudge might be an exception. Yeah. Because he was a little later. Okay, all right, so if you don't want to put him in, fine. I... Then Vlad and, well, Manny failed enough drug tests. Yeah, you know. he, he won't get in. There's no way. I think Vlad will be an interesting case. But uh, <laughs> the best bad ball hitter I have ever seen. The One best the bad best ball hitter in... Hitter receiver. Well, I, I've i never seen a guy be able to... He, he, he would go... He had, You couldn't pitch to him. That, that's a thing that I remember most about him. Because he hit... He could hit anything. Wait. And I'm looking at his stats now, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. He has to get in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. No, I agree. He was he was one home run away from a forty forty year. He's a three eighteen lifetime career hitter. You know, average one hundred and sixty two game season, thirty four home runs, um, four hundred and forty nine over the course of his career. Won an MVP. Um, Nine time All Star. No, I, I, I absolute cannon for an arm. I agree. One of the most feared, led the league in intentional walks five times. Yeah, has to get in. I, but like, he, I don't know. I feel like. Well, well, then I change. I, I don't know. I don't. I've completely, I guess, overlooked him. I, I don't see. Any I, way he I have too. I. <laughs> he just didn't come. It just didn't cross my mind. We're thinking about this. Well, he played most of his career in Montreal, so yeah, that's and true. then kind of bounced around at the end of his career. But Angels, even then, Rangers, the, Orioles. Right? His year with the Rangers was incredible. Yeah. Well, he also had Hamilton to kind of guard him. Yeah, but like you said, you can't pitch to him. So even no, when you're that's right. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you could bowl the ball up there. It'd be like cricket. Yeah, no, not even that. Like, PBA level. You could roll it to the plate and he hit it out. Yeah. Um, Posada, I guess, would be the only one who has a shot. But uh, not on the I don't know. Ball, but I, I don't know, man. Offensively, and the five rings help. What? I don't think the Yankees should have retired his number. More so because they're not going to have any numbers like 20 years If they from retire now. his, they should retire Paul O'Neill's. I, I I would agree with that. I, I would certainly Paul agree with that. But I don't think... I Do you really think that his number should have been retired? Well, they're... Reti- Honestly, at this point, they're retiring numbers to get people to come to the stadium. <laughs> Honestly, like... That's what comes with ticket prices. Now, like. Yeah. Which, is, don't even get me started on their new you-can't-print-tickets-at-home policy. Really? I didn't hear about this. Tell me yes. about it. Um, well, they had, in the past, they had had this deal with Stub, or not deal with Stub, but they came out with like a new rule that um, they w- they didn't accept tickets from StubHub unless they were printed at like a StubHub location which StubHub then put one within, like, a mile and a half. Like, they had to be printed a certain distance from the stadium or something like that. Okay. Um, so, you know, my parents would just buy it off of, like, Yankees Ticket Exchange or whatever, which is essentially, like, where season ticket holders go and then, um, re- like, resell tickets they're not going to use. Um, but now they came out and said all tickets purchased from StubHub they're like, are any purchased ticket that they print at home, you you no longer have that option. They won't accept it. And it's turned into this massive, you know, Lon Trost, who is the chief operating officer, the COO for the uh, Yankees, had... A, a, that's, a, that's, that is a Tim Kirchin-esque reference. Who? He's... He's... He's not my favorite person. Well, what's his Defi- name? Lon Trost. L O N N. L O N N T R. I thought it was O S T. L A W N. No, no, not not mowing the lawn, but okay. I would like to mow the lawn. So, the Yankees policy essentially knocks out StubHub and wants like to keep the secondary ticket market for the team, mm-hmm. and the. Um, the the explanation that Trost gave is he he said um something along the lines of people who buy their ticket for the like the face values buy it from the Yankees or whatever yeah. shouldn't have to sit next to people who don't. Well, that doesn't so, make no, sense. No, I mean, they, right. like okay, but, it, it, but the way it... he said it was, was like a. Uh, you know, they, um, you know, that people who can't afford the, like, 75, you know, $100 seats on StubHub that are, 
or you know the absurd ticket prices that the Yankees automatically already charge shouldn't you know the very elitist very you know anyone who can't afford this shouldn't have this people who can afford it shouldn't have to sit with people who can't but and it was very looked it, looked very bad isn't this good though because aren't you cutting out the the secondary market you have to it's buy good the for the Yankees it's not good for the fans no but it doesn't that make the prices go down because the way I understand it when you buy tickets as I know that this is the case with the Red Sox at least they secondary markets will buy up all the tickets and then just charge more like a significant significantly more this you is, can you can find deals on stuff up for example but, but you for, can get okay go, cheaper go ahead. tickets and having done it before especially like last minute I mean I the day in 2013 when Jeter was coming off of his broken ankle uh-huh. they um is that the Arizona I, game, or is that something different? No. No, um, okay, that's a different one. The Yankees were playing the Royals in Royals. New York, and Jeter hadn't played yet all season. He was still recovering from the broken ankle that he suffered in the ALCS. Mm. And I was with my mother in New York. She was actually at some, like, teaching, uh, like, conference, whatever it was, at Hofstra University on Long Island. And I was with her that day, that morning. And I got an alert on my phone saying that Jeter was going to make his return, you know, that day. That he was gonna play, he was in the lineup today. Uh, it was gonna be his first game back, first okay. game back in so, Yankee Stadium. So you got I, tickets. I bought a ticket for myself for twelve dollars for uh, the game. Printed it out at Hofstra. Uh, got on the Long Island Railroad, headed out to Queens, and then got on the subway and t- took it to Yankee Stadium. And I, but, I say that isn't possible now. Well. It doesn't. I, I'm look- so, I, I feel sorry for you, but that kind of negates my argu- my argument because actually the two the other argument I was going to make was I had to to go to a Maryland basketball men's basketball game this year, um, for the game they played against Purdue I had to get because I I, I um, my father was down for the weekend and I went with him so I could I couldn't get two student tickets so we had to get two. Uh, general admission, not general admission, like non-student tickets, whatever the phrase is. So, um, Maryland sells out all of their Big Ten games. And going back to the Red Sox, the Red Sox sell out all of their home games. So, like, it was... I, I get I get the feeling that the Yankees... Because that game wasn't sold out, was it? No. So... If it None was, of their games are sold out now, basically. But if, it, if it was sold out, let's just say for the sake of argument, do you think you could get a $12 ticket? If it was? Yeah. And, like, let's uh, all the tickets get bought no. up. So, uh, okay, but so, I, again, that's what I was... I, I, just, the way... Oh, I, I, it's not look. It doesn't look good when you look at it from the for the Yankees. Yeah, and I, I guess that that's just my point. I, I don't really connect with that I guess because they've had an I don't know they've had an ongoing dispute with StubHub and um, you know the Yankees want a minimum price on all tickets sold to their games and StubHub is like um, no like if a fan wants to sell their ticket for a dollar then they're allowed to do that do you know the minimum price do you know what it is no I don't but they the Yankees want a minimum price um and then StubHub says no. And then Lon Tross goes on WFA and the fan, the radio station in New York, yeah. goes on Boomer and Carton, so Boomer, Sias, and then Craig Carton, mm-hmm. fun fact, new house grad. Um, and this is, actually, here's his direct quote. All right. The problem below market at a certain point is that if you buy a ticket in a very premium location and pay a substantial amount of money, it's not that we don't want that fan to sell it, but that fan is sitting there having paid a substantial amount of money for a ticket and another fan picks it up for a buck and a half and sits there and it's frustrating to the purchaser of the full amount and quite frankly but, but they sold it for that though why is it frustrating for them if they sold it for that and quite frankly the fan may be someone who has never sat in a premium location it's very elitist Actually, very uh, yeah. dividing I, uh, you know 
put it, the fans who can't find the you know if you can't afford this to sit five rows from the field we're not going to allow you to find a deal on a ticket like that you know you 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 can sit on the upper deck of the bleachers or wherever yeah it just hit me it just hit me what you're saying and that's why the yankees don't sell out right? no it's, it's and or, they, or that's why they won't never, this year this was never a thing at the and at the old yankee stadium that's why i don't the new yankee stadium you don't like the new yankee stadium no i don't well i i i i, I am very aware of that Yes, we've been over this before. Oh, Speaking of yes. which, I'm sitting, I'm sitting right here next to my Yankee Stadium baseball's cathedral, right about the old Yankee Stadium. Uh -huh. Oh, it's beautiful. Almost as good as the real thing. Well, it's no. nice to <laughs> reflect. Okay. August thirtieth was my last game there. What? No, August fifteenth, July thirtieth was my second last game there. Okay, August fifteenth, two thousand eight. 2008. Against the Kansas City Royals. Mm. Actually, fun fact: my brother and I walking out, you know, going down the ramp. We we took everything we possibly could. Yeah, I think you know, yeah, they, I were, they were like glow in the dark arrows on the ramp in case of an emergency to you know show where to go. We took those. We took you know signs. You know, we took we took everything we could possibly get our hands on because you know, very very important place in our child childhoods. Mm -hmm. I've said. Um, but what were we even talking about before? I, I, oh, I don't know. We were talking about Posada. And we, we, we were talking about Posada. We were talking about As, Posada and the Hall of Fame and whether or not they should retire numbers and selling tickets and stuff. Which they shouldn't. I don't, I, I don't understand well, why. They're trying, to, they're trying to connect with the new generation, not I don't say new generation, but the Jeter, the core four. That's what they're trying to reflect okay, on this I see. just latest era of Yankees baseball. So Posada, Jeter, had Rivera. Uh, I mean, they were they gave Willie Randolph a plaque. Yeah. Uh, who else? They retired Bernie Williams' number. They gave oh, him yeah, a plaque. That's right, Bernie. Which, by the way, they uh, they're giving Mariano Rivera a plaque this year. Well, yeah, um, as they should. Yeah. No, I, I have no problem with that. But uh. The discussion was there are only five monuments in monu monuments in Monument Park. Well, let me take that back. George Steinbrenner has one that is about four times the size of Ruth and Gehrig's, which is absurd. Yeah. And then was it put in when he was still when he passed away? Okay. That's what they did to honor him. They that his face is all over the new stadium. Um. And they have one to honor the victims of 9-11, so that's okay, obvious. that's fine. But not a player one. Um, but as far as players, they have Ruth, Mantle, Gehrig, DiMaggio, and Miller Huggins, who was you know, an old-time manager player. Okay. And Huggins, Ruth, and Gehrig were the three originals. So um, the question is, should Rivera get a monument? Is that what Well, what they've decided... Getting? No, nah, it wasn't even necessarily Rivera. It's a question of what will Jeter get? Because if you you look at the Rivera, look at the, listen, I I tell you, I tell you this right now. Rivera was a better closer than Jeter was a shortstop. No one meant more. Well, okay. This here, here's the question. Here's where the question becomes. Okay, it, do you Jeter's the second greatest shortstop of all time? And if he's not second, he's third. Who was ahead of him? Wagner and Honus Wagner, and the only person I could potentially is Ripken. My <sighs> is the only person I could potentially see ahead of the him. The only thing is, for, oh boy, and I was actually I was talking about this earlier today. The thing about Jeter is, while he was a great player, he was more consistent than he was like a superstar but he was consistently great and he won and there was no person he did who, win but he did benefit from playing on in you know, one of the those teams greatest aren't teams those teams aren't nearly as good without Jeter I he don't was, know I, I was, think I think they from 2003 won. on he was a captain I, he was the leader of that okay, team that, that's he fine. was he was as Reggie Jackson once said he was the straw that stirs the drink so he, he was he was the glue he, he, that kept that here's a question right now never okay. won an MVP but he should have answer this is 
He got robbed three times. Is Jeter better than Rivera at what he did? Not, I'm not talking about on, off the field. I'm talking about on the field. Is he better than Rivera? No. Okay. But All right. Jeter, okay. But okay. Jeter no. No. I know what you're gonna say. Listen. 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 Jeter was still listen. more important okay. than the team. Here is the question: Do you, in terms of monuments, right? If yeah. If, do you? What's more important? Uh, and I don't think there's a right answer to this. It's an open-ended question. Is it more important to be dominant on the field, or is it more important to be more... Cause I, I, I would consider Jeter to be a, a symbolic figure to the Yankees, right? Yeah, and see, I think that's it, also going to play a part of it. As I think when... So you look what's at the, more, is it more important what you did on the field than what you meant to the organization or what you did on the field? Well, or do you just give them both I don't think monuments? there's an answer to that question. I don't think there's an answer to that question, but when you look at it, they both had both. That's, it sounds weird, but they both... Rivera was, you know, it wasn't like Rivera was an issue off the field, but Jeter was an all-time great player while being the face of Major League Baseball for over a decade. Mm -hmm. And when you look at who the Yankees have monuments to, Ruth and Gehrig have their own era. I'm sorry, you're not going to give, you're not not going to give Lou Gehrig a monument. He actually got one before Ruth did. Yeah. Um, and Ruth speaks for himself. Then the DiMaggio era, then the Mantle era. Then they stopped winning for a while. You're not going to give Reggie Jackson a monument that was that would be nonsense. Then they stopped winning you know, the 80s and basically playing the era. Um, so that, so now, I guess the question is, now that we have this new era of greatness, the late 90s, early 2000s, mm -hmm. how are they going to, because this is the first time that they've really had this discussion since, I guess, Mantle left. Because they haven't won at the rate that they won with Jeter okay. and had a player like that. So, so what would you do? I'd give them a monument. Both you know, of them? Sorry, but if you give and I know people, if you give George Stein, if you give George Steinbrenner a monument, then you give Cheater a monument. Um, I would have trouble giving Rivera a monument simply, and I trust me. I, Why he's the greatest well, closer that I ever lived? I don't think he'd win five World Series without Mariano. I'd agree with that. Greatest relief pitcher. Um, oh yeah, greatest relief pitcher. And. My the only thing that I would hold me back is that he only you know he didn't play every day. And while Jeter, think about what Jeter did though, three ten lifetime career hitter, three seventy seven on base percentage, face no, of I, base. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not saying. Hits. I'm not saying he was, like an average player. He was a great player. But my point is, Rivera was better as a closer the Jeter was as a shortstop. I don't think you can argue, on the field, I don't think you can argue that. But, but that, it's like 1A and 1. Well, so... You're, you're so, talking about the great relief pitcher of all time. Oh, that's like, and a second. Hey, check your microphone, buddy. J just see if it's... You're coming a little chop choppy. You just sounded choppy for the little bit there. Am I better I now? Uh, yeah, uh, right now that's, you are. That's a good connection, bro. Yeah. Yeah, there probably is. That's all right. Me. The Wi-Fi here is... Syracuse, if you're listening to this, you're pathetically bad at having Wi-Fi. That's all right. We'll, 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 we'll power through. So, all I'm saying is, Jeter... Well, Jeter, I you're think... Either talking, you're either giving a monument to the greatest relief pitcher of all time or top to top three, in my opinion, top two short stuff of all time. And probably one of the one of the, I don't know how to put this, one of the most Yankee Yankees of all time? Well, Mike Lupica Mike Lupica is, is that, um, writer for the sense? New York Yes. Okay. No, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, Mike Lupica wrote an article when he was retiring, I believe, that no one has meant more to the Yankees. He's the most important Yankee. Mm -hmm. of all time um, and ESPN every I want to say two years comes out with a list of their greatest baseball players ever 
simply looking at stats and you know um, I guess what they like I don't want to say what they meant because that you know can lead to more things but uh mm-hmm. But, but I mean, like, no steroids taken into consideration. Like, you know, Bonds is top three. Right. And they put Jeter at 31 all time. So, what is, I can't tell if you're, I, I can't tell if you're mad about that or you think it's a good I spot. I think, honestly, I'd put him even higher, but that's, there might be a little bit of bias in there. Um, who, who is one out of curiosity? Uh, Ruth. Ruth? Okay. Ruth is yeah, one. Yeah, I. Maze is two. Bonds is three. Mm-hmm. Okay. Williams four. Aaron five. Just in case. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's what? a fine top five. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, they they were all over. They were all overrated. <laughs> none of none of them played in a good era. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Gary, com- Gary comes in at eleven. Um, other players on the Yank. DiMaggio was twenty. Mm-hmm. Fun fact: A Rod was twenty three. Really? Well. Yes. Um. But I'm. It's, I'm gonna try and look through this, and when I find Rivera, I'll let you know. But I. They put him ahead of Griffey Jr. and Nolan Ryan. Really? Who? Yes. Jeter. They put him ahead of Pete Rose. They put him ahead of. Uh, well, but Brooks Robinson. I, Co- they put him ahead of Koufax. Champion. I think. Well. You make a good. You made a good point when you said he plays. He played a glamorous position, right? Shortstop is a more glamorous position than closer. And they put maybe, Rivera at fifty-two, but because are there, there aren't any relief pitchers ahead of him. No, are there? Okay, not a, not a chance. There are only I, th- I want to say like fewer than ten pitchers. Really? They, here are the pitchers they put ahead of him: Grover, Cleveland, Alexander at fifty-one. Mm-hmm. Lefty Grove at 48. Right. Warren Spawn at 45. Sandy Koufax at 44. Um, Pedro okay. at 41. Oh, I, I might put both of those higher. I'd have to look at the list. Nolan Ryan at 36. Uh-huh. Bob Gibson at 33. Um, Poolhouse comes in at 29. Care. Christy Matthewson at 28. So you're at 7 there. Steve Carlton at 25. 8. Is Walter Johnson the highest rated? No. No. Um, I'll get there. It's Tom Seaver at 22. So there's like 10. No, wait, haven't you said more than. There's only 10 pitchers on the list? Isn't this more than 10 pitchers? I, I said there there's only like 10 pitchers ahead of them. Oh, ahead of them. Okay. Oh, so okay. I'm, I, I, all right, I, I was. And that's including starters. I, I, too. I, I thought you meant ten total. No. And I was ten, like only ten percent pitchers. Hmm. Okay. And by the way, Clemens is the number one ranked pitcher. Really? Well. At number seven. Hmm. Hmm. Well, from what I I've heard, because I obviously didn't see them play, but. The two most dominant pitchers at their peak were Pedro and Koufax. So, does this? Well, you don't know either. You didn't see him. I say, well, you can't really talk talk to that well, because. So, I'm but there. here's the thing: is this list talking about? Um, are are we talking about greatest over the course of their career or dominant, like dominance? They're saying they call it ESPN's Hall of 100, and their introduction to it. This is exactly um, frustrated by the endless PED debate that has overtaken all Hall of Fame arguments. In 2013, ESPN.com created the Hall of 100, designed to recognize the 100 greatest players in MLB history. Period. There are no new members in the 2015 class except for one addition among the honorable mentions. Felix Hernandez. Really? Um, yes. Wow. Okay. He came High in race. somewhere between 100 and 125. They have 25 honorable mentions. Mm. Um, and then they go, 
Otherwise, A-Rod, Pujols, and Carrera saw their rankings drop, while Jeter moved up slightly in his final year of eligibility. Okay. So, All right. So that's, I mean, that's what is. So they're saying 100 greatest players ever okay. without any, you know, steroid, whatever. I kind of like that. I don't necessarily agree with the order, but... Well, yeah, I mean, I no one, it's not going to be fun. perfect. But well, how do we, what did this start with? So, I don't, I, I Wait, don't. This gets back to monument versus plaque. I, I don't think that, I, I, I don't, I, I still think Rivera was a better closer than Jeter, than Jeter was a shortstop. But I think he, you're right, but he played, he played a more meant, glamorous position. Jeter meant. And fine, okay, he meant more to the team. Jeter, and you look at Jeter, and you look at. I mean, I, I you can't even speak. I mean, being a kid growing up as a Yankees fan, you can't even speak to what. I guess Jeter at no point, I'd say during my eighteen years, or at least you know, like watching him play, uh-huh. was ever like my favorite player. Like my brother was always you know always had Jeter stuff. Uh-huh. I loved. I mean, before when I was little, I loved Jason Giambi. I, I was always a big Jason Giambi fan. Jason Giambi, huh? That's a then, blast from the past. Oh, yeah. Then they got A-Rod, and of course, you, as a kid, you love A-Rod. Right? A-Rod had the nickname. He had the, he was the best player in baseball. Then the steroid thing you know, dropped him from my top. And I, and then I became a pitcher, so I love Spathia. And CC, I'd say, is probably still my favorite Yankee. Um, but Let's see for how long. When, look, looking back on it, I can't imagine my childhood without Derek Jeter. Okay. While I can without A. Rod Giambi Sabathia. Mm-hmm. But I mean, he literally was, you know, like my hero growing up. You know, you never, you never thought of him as like always oh, my favorite player. But like, yeah, I can't imagine Derek Jeter. I can't imagine my childhood without Derek Jeter. It didn't, it didn't hurt that he was class act off the field either. Yes. I mean, you could. I've seen an argument where no, you know, no player is meant more to, you know, I guess I don't want to say baseball because you know that gets into a whole, you know, oh, Willie May, well, yeah, obviously, but mm-hmm. or Hank Aaron, um, Jackie Robinson, yeah, that, that that might be a good name to toss out there. But I think people, the people who, oh, he was overrated, he was this, he was that, have no idea what. Derek Jeter meant and what he what Derek Jeter did on the field and off the field is yeah and I I almost get the feeling that when you're that consistent for that long you don't get talked about as much as a player who is great oh, yeah. for like four or five years he was never the, the map he could never he was never the best player in baseball but he was always right there and he won and he was he played the game the right I remember throwback to your freshman year history teacher my four year golf coach Mr. Hicks talking about this is when Jeter was retiring and I actually he was like the first person I talked to about it when I got the alert on my phone saying Jeter said you know this is going to be his final year I was like well I know who I'm going to go talk to Um, and he said he remembers watching a series it was the one where the Yankees were playing the Red Sox and you know Jeter dives into the stands you know, the July series in 04. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I know. Um, I, I, I do recall. Yes. And Nomar was sitting out that game. And, you know, the debate was because he came up, Jeter came up with Nomar and A-Rod was out of the three shortstops, you know, which one are you going to take? You have Jeter, who's, you know, the glamorous, you know, New York wins all the time. Nomar, who's kind of like the exotic, who puts up great numbers, plays in Boston, injury, but you know, injury prone. injury prone. And A Rod, who is gonna go down as the greatest player of all time, but doesn't has Jeter had everything that A Rod wanted, in you know being the star of the Yankees and being the guy in New York and winning. Mm-hmm. Um, and Nomar sat out that like series or that game with some. Jacoby Ellsberg injury, some ailment, some ailment, mm-hmm. and Jeter goes in and you know makes that play. And I remember Mr. Hicks going, you know, that was the moment I realized, you no, know, wow, 
maybe maybe we have the wrong shortstop over here in Boston. Mm-hmm. And, you know, th- he would do anything within his power to win and never let... You know, people always talk... Or, and this, is, I'm, this is gonna go off track a bit, but people with Gronkowski's, like, party crews, people are like, oh, well, why doesn't, you know, he get talked about in the same way that Manziel got talked about? Well, because it doesn't affect his on-the-field plane. Uh-huh. And, you know, Jeter... People, you know, Jeter had, had a party streak early in his lifetime, but, you know, he would do anything he could to win. Uh-huh. And, you know, was classy on the field, off the field, just... I'm not sure I ever... I'm not sure people realize what they saw. And uh, how does it feel that the Red Sox won in 4 with Orlando Cabrera playing shortstop? Oh. And I and I how many I'm sure I've told you this. I know I've told Sam and Nate this, but uh, uh-huh. I I still would rather have won in o in o one than in o four. Oh, if I, I if, you, if I were if a Yankee gave me fan, one, I would agree. Would you, I mean, it's not like Boston was going to win at some point. Yes, the way they came back was incredible, and you know. Yeah, just, I, I I'm very like, aware like, of how you feel about about that. Uh, but I think o one was. I I owe one I think hurt a little bit more, especially because of the obviously the off the field implications of the series. Yeah, and then to I mean, have a two one lead in the bottom of the ninth with Rivera. Yeah, on with the, mound. the greatest closer, greatest relief pitcher. You know, we've said it enough times. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, on the mound, and my favorite one of my favorite stats about Rivera is more people have walked on the moon that have scored on Mariano Rivera in the postseason. And that, that I mean, that's just incredible. Mm-hmm. Well, but, uh, so that just plays to my original argument that yes. Rivera... <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, I'd have no problem giving both of them monuments. All right, yeah, give them both I, I would have, but because they're giving Rivera a plaque, what becomes the standard then for getting a monument? Are we ever oh. going to see another... Okay, so you brought it another? back. I was a little. I I was a little. I, I forgot that that was how you started the. Uh, uh, you is, started. You it, started the topic. Okay. If, if if Rivera doesn't get one, is Jeter gonna get one? And I I think he. He probably will. I I mean I, I, I mean if George Steinbrenner becomes the pre- or the standard, then how does Rivera not get one? Think about it, George Steinbrenner. Yes, they won with Reggie Jackson, but other than that, they didn't win in the 80s. Steinbrenner gets suspended for trying to dig up dirt on uh, Dave Winfield. Then they they ban him from baseball, and while he's gone, they draft Jeter, and they sign Rivera out of Panama, and they get you know Posada from Puerto Rico. They get Bernie Williams. They, you know, they build the core of that mm. Yankees dynasty, and the second he comes back, the last World Series they've won is because they happen to have great chemistry on that 9 team. But all the free spending, the Giambi contracts, the A-Rod contracts, the Carl Pavano contracts, uh, you know, all of them, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, Gary Sheffield, um, trying to think of even more here. I'm sure, I'm sure there are plenty. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, you get what I'm saying. I do. Um, I understand. He, all of he, those, shouldn't, he shouldn't have a statue. No, or a what, what, what is call George Stein? And I think, I mean, I don't hate him, and I don't think he was a bad owner because I think he legitimately cared about put it. I think he cared about the fans a lot mm-hmm. because I think he wanted to put the best feel. He always reminded people, you know, we're doing this for the fans, we're doing it for this. It was actually as brash as he was, was extremely uh, generous philanthropically, you know donate a lot of money to charity. So always there to help some you know people out. Um, I think he legitimately cared about the fans and putting you know a good team on the field. I just don't think he went about it the right way. I think he was so impatient and like I said, I think brash is a great word that the second you know they aren't winning, he'd make a change. When you know I don't think he has any patience for it. But uh, I don't I don't see the same dedication with his sons. And while I think they are honestly making some good moves now, I think that's more. I don't. I think Cashman's actually a very good GM, mm-hmm. so I like Cashman a lot. Um, but I don't think Steinbrenner deserves the monstrous 
I mean, honestly, if you get a chance, anybody listening to this, go get a chance. Look up the size comparison on the George Steinbrenner plaque out there in center field at Monument Park in Yankee Stadium and compare it to the one for Ruth right. or Gary. It is it's unbelievable. Um, and my dad always jokes that, uh, you know, when we buy the Yankees one day, then he goes, the first thing we're doing is taking down that plaque out in center field. <laughs> um, so while I don't think he was necessarily a bad owner, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. What am I looking at? Is, a, a plaque? Is what I'm... Just type in George Steinbrenner plaque on Google Images. Okay. And what am and I it, comparing it to? Look at the first image that comes up. It's a guy... Oh, my God. There. And that's Mantle's monument, by the way. Next the one? one? Direct, directly to the left of it. Dear Lord. And, my God. The, the bust of, you know, Steinbrenner. So just his body, the plaque part, is about about the size of Mantle's entire monument. It's bigger than a lot I'm of these you, people. You can fit at least two monuments in there. Um, Comfortably. Yes, within the size of Steinbrenner's plaque. Oh my god. Yes, that is something. Go look at that. That's crazy. It's And I think if, if Steinbrenner becomes the standard for you know what um, a plaque is, or what, or who, or who but, deserves. Uh, also, he had what? some family. Well, yes, yeah, like, still right? owning the team, so right. So I, I guess you you have to take that into consideration. Yeah, I don't know. I think not that I personally, not being a Yankee fan probably the farthest thing you could be from a Yankee fan. Yeah. I don't care what they do, but I if I were, I don't think I'd be opposed to either Rivera or Jr. You know, I'd, I'd be fine with I'd be fine with both. But um I think if Steinbrenner's the or I think if you're giving Rivera a plaque, then it becomes a you're sep- you're separating between Jeter and Rivera and well, I think I if I had to, I think if I had to only choose one, I would choose Jeter, but uh um then I think um I think that uh well I don't know what I mean I guess you just you have to get <laughs> Where are you going with this? Well I mean, if you're only choosing one I choose Jeter, but I think mm-hmm. both okay. deserve it. Okay. Alright, I, I I'm not gonna I, I won't argue with you. I think I, I, honestly, if you want, and I, I understand wanting Jeter because I, I am a, certainly aware of what he meant. Yeah. Uh, to the organization. All right. Well, let's. You want to switch course or change gears, kind of, stay in baseball, but do something a little more current. Sure. A little bit. We've gone on about this for like an hour, um, and I'm sure we will rehash this at some, this this topic at some point. But um, okay, the thing I wanted to bring up: new rules this year. We have Manfred. Uh, the Manfred regime has added a, a few more. Um, pace of play and safety rules. Yes, he has. Yes, and uh, first of all, I, because I, um, I, I like Manfred. I think he, I think he's done a pretty good job so far. I think he's done a really good job, especially, um, after Sea League, who I yeah, did who not, I don't think we either one of us has a uh, many nice things to say, about say good out or a good opinion of him. Yeah. Put it that way, and and the, I did like how CLA. It, it was under CLA that they added the wild card, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, right. That was yes. one of his last things. I do like that because it puts more a bigger influence on winning your division, which I think is the way it should be. But all right, here 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 are the new rules, the new slide rule. Okay, and this is obviously after the Ruben Tejada injury, um, in the NLDS series between the Mets and the Dodgers that knocked him out of the postseason and um, the injury to the uh, 
to to the Pirates a shortstop Jung Ho Kang. Am I pronouncing yeah, that right? Yes. Um, yes. Okay. I think it might be Kong. Kong. Wait. Yeah, okay. I, I'd have to look. Anyway. Um, okay. He, he, the basics. This is reading from the text on MLB.com. Um, in the past, runners were given wide latitude coming into second base as long as they were close enough to touch the bag. Under the new rule 6.01J, a runner will have to make a bona fide slide, which is defined as making contact with the ground before reaching the base, being able to and attempting to reach the base with a hand or foot, being able to and attempting to remain on the base at the completion of the slide, except at home plate, and not changing his path for the purpose of initiating contact with a fielder. So the question is Did you, you get like all that? Rule? Yeah, did you get first of all, did you get all that? And second of all, do you agree? Do you think this is a good move? Because this is a I don't I don't think it needed changing. So because this is well, how long has Major League Baseball existed? Eighteen well, are we talking including the American League? Because Major League Baseball is, you know, ex- existed, I guess, since you know the eighteen something. The American League was founded in nineteen oh one, but uh, well, so since the Civil War, right? You've been able to yeah. do. You've been able to. Th- th- you've been able to. Uh, s- Take out second base. Yeah, runner. that's what I'm trying uh, trying to get at. There, you've been you've been able to slide and take out fielders. Now. 150 years later, rule has changed, and from your first reaction, um, from your first reaction, I think that you think it's an overreaction to two plays that just so happen to happen in the same year. I see no... It's fine. I mean, it was... We're becoming soft... Same thing has happened in the NFL. Uh-huh. Well, to an extent, in the NFL. Everyone's soft. Everything's soft. Soft, soft. That's going to be my word of the day. Soft. I don't think it's... I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I, I don't... I kind of agree with you. I don't think it needed to be done. But... Yeah, but I... I, I, I think it was a little... It, it was certainly a reaction to what happened last year, especially with um, with uh, with Tejada on, on national television. Yeah. And I think you make a good point, but I think that's kind of what you get with the era, right? Because we're in an era where you're trying to make every... Especially... The best example being with all of the concussion protocol there is now in all sports, yep. we're in an era where safety is more important than the game itself. Which I mean, take that the way you want. I mean, I, I again, I don't, I don't know if the, I don't think this is a bad thing, but I don't, I think it was an unnecessary change. Yeah, I, I honestly, I think it was fine. Um, I mean, it. it, it it's, I mean, obviously, you're always looking out for player safety. I mean, I guess that should be you know your number one thing. But like, you're just. It's always been a part of the game, and I don't think it was necessary to change. Mm-hmm. I. I I don't know if. It's not like it happens every game. No, it no. It, that's that's a good point, and it, it happens once. An injury on this happens a couple times a season. I was going to say once or twice a season. And it just so happened that two that happened this season, or last season, actually, were two of the worst. Yes. Like, possible. I had two, now, two of the worst possible became, outcomes. If it, be, if, it be, if it became baseball's version of an epidemic, um, then I think you... But after, you know, twice, two major ones, I don't think that that's warrants a change. If it became a... You know, you're seeing someone get hurt every game mm-hmm. because you know the players are getting bigger and faster. Uh, you know, there are more plays at second, but whatever the reason is, you know, the, you know, the cleats are getting stronger. <laughs> whatever the yeah uh, the reason is, then I think 
you can reevaluate. But to do it now after Destiny Two, I don't, I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I again agree. I, but I, this doesn't bother me. It's not like when I watch a game this season that I'm going to be like it, it's going to be in my head. Yeah, and it's going to bother me. Like when I watch the NFL, the you know, head to head contact, helmet to helmet contact, which that's kind of a different thing. I think that was certainly more necessary than this, but like that rule is in my head when I'm watching the game. This yeah. rule isn't gonna, it's not gonna affect my watching the game. And I'll no, probably, I'm, not, I'm only gonna think about it once every couple of weeks, probably, when there's a close play at second. Yeah, where, you know, someone might be called, I don't wanna say called out, but like he might. There might be a double play where someone had a chance to take out a second base or a shortstop that he didn't um, because, you know, worried about the rule and stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, what's the penalty if he does um, anyways, if they rule that he wasn't close enough to the base or whatever? Uh, wait, hold on. Say that again? No, what's the penalty? For example... Uh, if, the penalty. Um, I, you know, I, you I, I don't see it listed. Break a rule. I imagine it will be the... The runner is, at, like, it, it, all runners involved in the play are out. I guess. Yeah. So and it, prob- it would I'm be sure an automatic fine. dump play, or something like that. Yeah. Fine, and then you know maybe a second offense would be a suspension or whatever. Yeah, I I, I don't see it um listed here. Okay. But to add on to that, that's not the only thing that um that that's not the only change they made within this rule. Potential violations yep. will be subject to instant replay review. As and here's the important one: as will neighborhood plays. Middle infielder straddles the base or glides past it on a double play pivot. So you can now challenge neighborhood plays. Okay. Which, Which I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I don't either. Especially if you're going to make. I mean, instant- I'm not a huge fan of. I'm not a huge fan of replay to begin with, but I guess if you're going to have it, then a situation like that, I think you should be able to use it. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. Could not agree more. Um, <laughs> I, I have to bring this up before I go on to the to, to the other new rule. Um, you, you you can you can still make contact with a fielder. That's not banned. As long as you do it in a, in a uh, to quote the MLB.com, um, a runner may still make contact in the course of a permissible slide. Yeah. So it's not like you he's untouchable now. Yeah. You can still hit him, but you just can't go out of your way to hit him. <laughs> you can't, but here's the funny thing, and I, I'm pretty sure you're going to know what I'm talking about. Um they specifically prohibit the roll block, quote unquote. <laughs> so if you remember um, Hal McRae, nineteen seventy seven ALCS. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. No, I know what you're talking about. So if I I would recommend anybody who does not understand that reference to look that play up. Hal McRae, M C R A E in the nineteen seventy seven ALCS. Where he, I don't remember who he hit, but he just destroyed. Was it was it against Kansas City? It was, it was Willie Randolph. He was on Kansas City. Oh no, I I know. I I. Oh. McRae took yes. out Willie Randolph. Yes, I, I I that's that's what I meant. I I remember the Yankees. I don't rem- I did not remember who McRae. Was for. Yeah, I knew, he played for Kansas City. I, I knew they were blue. That, that's the one thing that I remember. Yes. So, and it was in Yankee Stadium, right? Yes. So, <laughs> oh my gosh! I so I again this rule being in existence to ban a play like that, I guess, kind of makes sense because that was like a like a linebacker type play. Yeah. But I, I again I kind of um, I, I still agree with you. I think it's just a reaction. Yeah, and I think it's unnecessary. But I got uh, it, it's not it's not the worst thing. That I I'm not gonna. No, I mean it's not like Man, saying, Man you, know, doing you can't it. throw a fastball anymore. Yeah. Yes. And the other the the other new rule 
is about again, oh gosh, this one bothers me a lot more. It's about pace of play. Yeah. And mound visits, which before I read it, I hate the pace of play rules. I think if you don't like the pace of baseball, then don't watch it. Because it, it, they. I know, Reds, you, you, Reds, you voiced this last time. Too. Yeah, Red Sox Yankees games, fine. Those are four hours. But an average baseball game without pace of play is still only around three hours to three hours and ten minutes. All right. So I, I, I hate that these rules are a thing because I don't think baseball, even with pace of play, as much as I love it, is to someone who doesn't really understand the intricacies of it is a boring sport. There's a lot of downtime, right? Yeah. I, I think the stat that I, I remember from a few years ago is during a baseball game, the ball is only in play for 17 minutes out of yeah. the three hours or so that, that it goes on. So, again, I, I, I don't... I think making it shorter really... Especially to an American audience, I, I don't know if that makes it that much more interesting. Especially considering so many Americans dislike soccer, and there are literally two or three commercial breaks in a soccer game or soccer match, and they're only during halftime. The, the game never stops when during the two halves. So yeah. I, I I think baseball. But that that aside, here here are the new rules. Um, Quoting from MLB.com again, visits to the mound by managers and coaches, which previously had no time limit, will be limited to 30 seconds, and between inning break times will now match the commercial time. Two minutes, five seconds for local broadcasts, and two minutes, 25 seconds for nationally televised games. The break times were 20 seconds longer last season, but the change is expected to allow the resumption of play uh, to more closely match the end of the breaks. The timer for the mound visits will be the same in-stadium clock that measures between inning breaks. The timer will be set at 30 seconds and will be counting down when the manager or coach has exited the dugout and the timeout for a mound visit has been granted by the umpire. Unless the manager or coach signals for a pitching change, he must leave the mound when or before the timer reaches zero seconds. Two paragraphs. A lot of information. A lot of uh, nonsense. A, a lot of nonsense. A, a lot of unnecessary nonsense. Yeah. I just, I don't I I think it's un I so unnecessary. Yeah, it's I don't. Silly. I, don't I, I agree with you that if you're, I mean, they've seen a. Honestly, I think what baseball needs to do more of, and I think this is where they're losing. I don't want to say losing people to basketball, but and I think they. They are getting better um, at this than they have been in the past few years. Is marketing their stars more? Yeah. The NBA is incredible at this. I mean, mm -hmm. everyone knows LeBron. They, you know, star Blake Griffin's in every Kia ad when he's not punching a locker room attendant. But you, uh, basketball benefits from only having five players on the floor per team at one. At yeah, one but time. I mean, they still have their stars. When, oh, no. I mean, oh, they do. But when was the last time you saw? When was the last time you saw? Honestly, when was the last time you saw Clayton Kershaw in a commercial? No, you never see him. Maybe exactly. in maybe in L.A. But I get. Yeah, but but again, that's a local. You see, you like I said, you see Chris Paul. You see Blake Griffin. You see the Clippers in commercials. Yeah. Heck, DeAndre Jordan is in a commercial, uh -huh. and he couldn't even decide which city to go to for three months. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. But basketball naturally is more of a star's sport. Whereas baseball, you can kind of... When it comes down to the postseason, it's usually the role players. who. Well, besides, yeah. you know, it'll be it's aces and role players. Yeah, it's usually. the... Well, Marco Scudero had a great year for Giants in 2012. Right. Um, trying to think of some more. No, like, but... Uh, but yeah, no, I know. I get what you're saying. Aaron Aaron Boone wasn't the star of that Yankees no. team. But you you make a good point as to that they that they're marketing their stars better. But I think were you gonna say they had? I was had, gonna say they, that's how you if you're losing the youth 
population or the youth kids, you know, coming in and playing baseball, fewer and fewer kids are playing baseball, uh-huh. then that's one way to counteract that is everyone loves basketball. And I think part of that is, is you know, the fact that every kid growing up, any, any kid with access to a TV sees their favorite NBA players on the television. Mm-hmm. Now, and, what were you going to say were ratings up last year? Do you know? I honestly don't. Okay, uh, because if ratings do go up, if they did go up and if they do go up, it's not going to be because of pace of play. It's going to be because baseball right now has one of their greatest well, I guess youth, youth influx of players. Yes. It's becoming more and more exciting. Yes. And I, I agree with you. And people are going to look at it and say, oh, you know, it's obviously that a pace of play did it, and that's nonsense. Yeah, no, it's not. Um, and so... The commercial breaks don't bother as a fan. The commercial breaks don't bother me as much. No, but because you only need a certain amount of time to warm up. But thirty sec, the thirty second rule doesn't make sense. And honestly, I, I think the umpires are going to be somewhat lax about this because yeah, we, we, we've I mean, seen they've been doing this for years, and it's not like they don't enjoy or in, uh, enjoy it. Yeah, you know, they and, they wouldn't be umpires if it, they didn't. In the they, the example is um that's similar to this is the uh keep one foot in the batter's box rule yeah that's not really been no that has i i remember my dad and i watching games this past summer and being like didn't he isn't there it's not against the rules like he just took two steps out i think is, is it joe west i think is one of the only ones who really yeah well he enforces everything and yeah <laughs> so i with the exception of a couple umpires, you know, th- I think this will be the same way. It won't be wouldn't, strictly wouldn't surprise seconds. Me. But I, I don't. I, I just. I don't like the clock. I don't think clocks have a place. Clocks aren't baseball. No. No, not it's not all. a time sport. No, and that honestly, part of that goes into the strategy. Being a pitcher, you know, shake things up, vary the time in between pitches. And you I, know. yeah, it, and I think it's. It's a tough pill for baseball to swallow that like they're long past their golden age. Right? And yeah. that they're not the center of attention. That's obviously football. Yeah. And As, I, I, and well would you still say baseball is America's pastime? Uh because I still don't think as much as people love football I don't know, baseball still and again it's different for me because never played football and baseball has always been my favorite sport but there's still something I feel it's still more American yeah well, you know, it, going out playing catch baseball um, baseball has the history too yeah. so I, I I would say it still is I mean 50 years from now maybe I would not, say but America it's the American pastime but foot, football I guess would be the American passion uh, as America's game yeah I mean we invented okay. both but yeah so, well, not we personally, but... Well, I did. Oh, did you really? <laughs> yeah. Did you in 1860-whatever? I, I invented whatever? the fastball. The fastball was my idea. The fastball was your idea. Well, I... <laughs> somehow I don't believe you. Okay. Um, <laughs> do, we have a, do we have anything else on... Anything else you want to add? Pace of play? If it ain't... I don't... You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, mm-hmm. and I don't think baseball is broken. No, it is not. It's certainly less broken than it was during the steroid era. Yes, that is true. So I think they have other issues to be worried about. Yeah. Okay. Um, quick note: we're recording this on Sunday, and I, it wasn't two major league teams playing against each other, but the Phillies became the first team to play an actual game today. Yes. Against the University of Tampa, which. When we get to four verticals, another spoiler alert, baseball will be brought up. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, first, first week of, mm, first week of spring training games. Yes, can't wait. I I love it. That love is it. great. I I will admit. Let me tell you, hold on, just quick okay, quick aside here today. Somehow, today, um, in Syracuse, where. By the way, Thursday's high is 23 degrees with a low of 9, and it's supposed to snow tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday. 
Wasn't it in the today 60s was, today in Syracuse? Today it was 65 degrees, <laughs> sunny. I played nine holes of golf with two of my friends, went out and played football, and threw baseball with four other kids. Absolutely fantastic time. One of my best days here, just enjoyed it. Really, it was like, wow, you know, baseball's back, spring's back. We've got games coming up. You know, been watching some college baseball on ESPN. It has uh-huh. just been – it has that feeling, that aura in the air, and it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. Spring is back, but only for a day. Yeah. In Syracuse. Yeah, literally only for a day because snow is coming tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I, I guess we will touch again on some of the games coming this week. Um, but should we, we – let's, let's move on while we still have time. Uh, okay. Do you want to do – what do you want to do? you want to do college basketball or NBA? It's up to you. We've done a lot of college basketball, but yeah, – we'll, we'll, we'll do NBA quickly because it's short. Yeah, it's I, say, thing, I mean, it's not, college basketball is the, you know, the talk of the town right now, I guess. Yeah. I mean, so, it's, well, we're, it's still – we're, we're closer to March Madness than we are to the NBA Finals. That's true. But the thing, of course, I have to bring up Warriors Thunder, which that, I am more convinced every day that it might actually be Warriors Thunder, not Warriors Spurs in the Western Conference. I, I would absolutely see that. Uh, but <laughs> the game on Saturday, which I. I'm kicking myself for not. I wasn't able to watch it, but I went. I've gone over the game, seen the footage, and yep. I I followed the game live late. My question to you is: Is there any? Is it possible to beat Golden State when they hit? What was it? Thirty-eight foot three pointers. Well, I don't think it's possible to be any team when you're shooting like to beat any team when you're shooting like that. But it, um, it, is it even going to be worth watching the NBA playoffs? Because well, the problem is that the real NBA final. And I have trouble saying this because I love LeBron. The real NBA finals is going to be whatever the Western Conference final matchup. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's and because Cleveland's in a state of complete disarray today, you know, J.R. Smith called out the rest. You know it's bad when J.R. Smith is calling you out for how you're playing, and I think, I think whether whether they play San San Antonio, Oklahoma City, um, e- even you know another team upsets one of those two teams and makes it to the Western Conference Clippers, Finals. Which, Clippers you know, might be like, one of them. They, they must have been playing well enough at that point so that they are a legitimate foe at that point. But um, he, here's the thing, though. Like, the Thunder had a... What, they have a 12-point lead in the fourth quarter? Yes. And they... It, I thought for sure. I remember... Uh, I was watching it with my friends last night. And they... It was... We went to go get food at the end of the third quarter, and I believe it was either tied or Golden State had a one-point lead. Yeah, it was at, at the end of um, at the end of three. It was Oklahoma State by five. Okay, well, it was close. It was close. And That's the point. We close. come back. We come back from food. You know, it's not that long at all, and it was within, I'd say, fifteen minutes. And Oklahoma State's got a. Sick. Over a ten point lead, or Oklahoma State. Wow, I, I do that all the time. I completely understandable. Yeah, Oklahoma City's got at least a ten point lead, and um, you know it looks like they're running away with the game. They have two, in my opinion, two top five players in the league in Westbrook and Durant. Mm-hmm. Um, Durant's hitting shots from all over the place. He's as clutch as they come, and then it literally, literally became the Steph Curry show. Literally yeah. became the Steph Curry show. I mean, that is, you know, I, people, well, of course, Twitter's, oh, this is the game we're going to tell our grandkids about. No, no, it's not. You're going to say, like, oh, I remember one time Steph Curry hit a great shot. You're not going to be like, 
On February 27th, 2016, Steph Curry hit a 38-foot jump. You're, you're not going to say that. But this was an incredible performance by the greatest shooter of all time. First of all, Curry now broke his own record with 25 games? No, 24 yes. games to go, right? Broke his own record for uh, three-pointers made in a season. And he's going to shatter that, clearly. Was I mean... Tw was tw I'm like, 12 for 16. And, but the overall point of this, with 46 points against Oklahoma yes. City, and he tied a single game three-point record with 12. Yes. The point, though, if Oklahoma City can't, which is arguably the second best team in the NBA, second or third, if they can't hold a 12-point fourth quarter lead at home against Golden State, I don't know how you beat them. Because you're not going to win at Golden State. We don't, well, hey, the only... <laughs> The only thing I could possibly think, well, so you're gonna have still, to beat them. I'm still them. amazed at the fact that Cleveland won two games last year. Yeah, in the but finals. It, Golden State so. didn't have. LeBron had a one of those games. Or er, Kyrie Irving was. Um, well, who won game one? Remind me. Golden I'm State like, won game okay, one. Okay, but Irving got hurt. Right, and then LeBron. LeBron. This is where. Well, LeBron proved them. last year that he was the best player in the NBA, and he carried yeah. them to two wins. He had one of the greatest performances in a final ever and lost. He is the only player in NBA history to lead both teams in points, rebounds, and assists in the NBA finals. And they lost. Yeah. No, but... I mean, he could not have done more. I, that, that was... And again, the Warriors... That Last year's Warriors is not this year's Warriors. No, this year's Warriors are better. So, I, well, you know what it comes down to? It, it, you're, at most, at most, you you will win one game at Golden State. At most. At most, which, which means, means you have to sweep the them. Way, I say you have to win all, all of them at you, home. You have to go 3-0 and at home, and that's not going to happen. You're not going to win two at Golden State, and even if you do, you're not going to, then you won't win two at home. Yeah. So, I, I I don't know. The only reason reason to watch the NBA playoffs this year is going to be to see Oklahoma City San Antonio, right, and to see yeah. if the Warriors can back up their and just to see the Warriors win it after they quite possibly break the Bulls single season. I, I and I think they will. I don't see anyone. I don't see anyone getting in there and you know topping or stopping that. No, I I I mean it's they do have a uh, and since the All Star break they haven't looked invincible. No, they, they but, do. But their their they wins, look. all of their wins have been impressive in their own in their own way. The the one at Miami I thought was very was very impressive. And then obviously the comeback against gold against Oklahoma City, but I mean they still have they they still have the Spurs three times right? Yeah, I'm looking right now. Yeah, three. Um, Golden State only one more time. Well, all right. Yeah, I actually, as I'm looking at it, Clippers once. Well, they play the Clippers this week. This week. No, yeah. they play the Lakers this week. Oh, Oklahoma City then plays. Um, oh yeah, Thunder play the Clippers. So, actually, yeah. I mean, looking for potential losses for them. What at San Antonio? They they play at San Antonio twice. But even then, I, this is right. I still would. I don't. I don't want to necessarily write them into the. Well, I, I, I'm not just yet. I is because as good as the Spurs are, they're even better in the postseason every year. But barring an injury, is does anybody really compare to Golden State? 
No, they're like you said, they're on a different so, path, but and, and they, they have the experience. They they have a we title. We haven't seen San Antonio at their best yet. I mean, does Popovich really care if they lose by thirty? Yeah, but that's a thing, though. We haven't seen them at their best, but. Is their best enough to cover a thirty-point law, like a thirty-point deficit? If they're at their we best, don't know, is that we, and we won't, plus we won't know until April or May? I I think the series will be fun to watch. I don't Perfect. think there's. I will be sh- shocked if anybody in the Western Conference beats San, uh, uh, not San Antonio, Golden State. And I I I think if the Cavaliers get healthy and LeBron starts. I personally, I think LeBron's had a bit, off, bit of an off year, but just I test alone. I still, I, I don't know. I still think. You know, I still think Cleveland would might actually give them the best fight. I mean, they do have the best player in the world. I don't know. Are I, you I, still I, saying that? I, I, I think I still think LeBron James is. I, I have trouble saying he's not. What, LeBron James? Yeah. Yeah, I, I he, he as good as had, Curry's been, I mean... It, I think he's almost, I think he's, he's earned that until... Yeah. I mean, it's not like he's playing badly, it's just... Curry's just at an un, unbelievable level. And I, I think... He, it, he's not playing, he's not playing poorly at all. I, I think, uh, shooting-wise, from what I've seen of him... Shooting wise, and maybe it's just because I am, I've watched Curry hit everything, but it just seems like he hasn't. When he's not driving, he's struggling to hit shots. More, not struggling, but he, he I guess he just doesn't. I, it's it's just Steph Curry, yeah, because he hits everything. He makes everyone else look subpar. Yeah, I don't what. Look at I uh, just look at I'm looking at the schedule down the stretch. I see three potential losses for Golden State. Like three maybe four if they have an off night. They're at Dallas and at San Antonio but I mean, twice. But I th- I think that th- I don't want to say what would worry me because nothing would worry me honestly right now if I were them. Um is that where their losses have come from so far well, this season? It hasn't been games versus, uh, you know, Oklahoma City or, um, you know, Cleveland or well, the first, San Antonio. They've lost at Denver, well, at Dallas, at Milwaukee, well, at Portland because Damian Lillard dropped 51. Um Okay, first of all, at Milwaukee was the tail end of a seven-game road trip. They had gone to double overtime the night before in Boston and then flown to Milwaukee. So I don't... That one, I understand. I also understand, besides Lillard's performance in uh, Portland, I think coming out of the All-Star break... I feel like they didn't have the same cohesiveness. I think we t- touched yeah, on this get, last week. Yeah, they, they had did. to get back into the rhythm, and you know, and I think that's understandable. Right. And then the other loss at Dallas, I, they actually got blown out that game. But, but I, I think what, what was the one thing missing from that game? You're gonna have to remind me. Steph Curry was on the bench. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. Right. So, yeah. They played without Curry. So that gives them this season two bad luck. Detroit is not an awful team. No, they're not, and, and they're they are underrated in a lot of ways. Drummond is yeah. underrated as well. And they just got edged by Denver, and kind of had an off night. But also another trend. Have you noticed what? All of those losses have come on the road. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're, they're untouchable yeah. at home. They're Twenty-four and zero. All so, of them. <laughs> so again, you can't beat them at home. So when it comes to the playoffs, you really you, you have to get lucky once, and then sweep them on your home court. Yeah, which 
It's not going to happen. Yeah, but again, anything can happen. I mean, no one thought the... Uh, and I know it's a, it is a different team, but no one thought the 07 Mavericks were going down to the Warriors, ironically, to the Warriors in the first round. That's true, but this is a different level. This isn't... Yeah baseball where or I know, just, if one you can't player ride gets hot you can ride them to the or one pitcher gets hot you can ride them to the World Series yeah. it's not football it's not certainly not hockey where eight seeds beat one seed seems like every year you can't write them in though yet I, I will agree with it's, that. I think it's as close <laughs> as you can to writing them in that's but. what I was going to say I because I don't believe that you can ever write in anything in sports but this is as close as I bet you, you would have written, you would have written in the 1980 uh, Soviet Union team too. Hey, just say well. <laughs> it's a very off the cuff example. I'm just That's saying. Phrase. No, I. No, I. No, you can't write in anything in sports, but this is as close as it gets. Right. Yeah. It's as close as it gets. Especially considering in basketball, usually, or in the NBA, usually, the higher it's seeds one and dominate. It's 1-2 or 1-3 in the, you know. Yeah. So history shows, history teaches us that, and they've been just unbelievable this year. Yeah. So, okay, I, I is, does anything else, anything else need to be said? I mean, obviously, I we'll think so. continue to follow them, and if they, I don't know, go... 0 oh, and three this week. I'm sure we'll talk about them again on um, uh, uh, next weekend during the show. But keep our eye on them. Okay. Um. Uh, we'll do some college basketball quickly. Sure. We wrap up. Okay. Um. Do a little bracketology, maybe. Bracketology. All right. Big games this past week. Um, Virginia over North Carolina. Big. Number three over number seven. Um, Oklahoma lost. Oklahoma lost again. Xavier lost today. To Duke to, lost today. Mm-hmm. I the Xavier lost to me. For Xavier, I know. Uh, that I, was a tough game for them. That's a tough place to go and play. A lot, yeah, and a lot of people. In terms, Xavier had Xavier as a one seed after um, they beat Nova, which was a great, great game. By the way, great game, really high. So a lot of the Big East games this year have been super high scoring. Yeah, especially with the which is un- unusual. Which yeah, very unusual. It's been great to watch, but I, I, I didn't have them as a one seed after they beat Villanova. And I think this, I, I think the Seton Hall, wait, well, Seton Hall's not a bad team, but that that'll take them out of the one seat conversation at least for the moment, which I think is right. Yeah, they're not a one seat in my opinion. I'm still, I'm still never sold on them. On um, oh, on, on Xavier. Xavier, yeah, no, I think they're upset bait. Yeah, when, when we get to the, uh, like Wichita State was when they were undefeated. Yeah. Like Gonzaga always is. Um, all right, moving, mo- moving on through the week. Quickly go over some of the stuff. Um, you mentioned Texas. All right, not Texas. Um, Oklahoma. Yeah. Losing to Texas, who also beat. Um, I be- oh, Gosh, I should have it up. So unprofessional. Um, all right, so th- 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 they won both their games this week. Texas. Maybe a little dangerous in the tw- it's they're in the Big Twelve, so and I I've made my feelings on the Big Twelve very clear. Yes. Best conference in all the land. I know, I know, I I know how you feel. Mm-hmm. Um, Iowa lost twice this week. Uh, once to Ohio State and once to Wisconsin. As Wisconsin, I Wisconsin right now is a tournament team. That's another good win for them, and I think we continue seeing that Iowa is not a true elite team. Though I think they ha- I, they did have a good one, and they had the two really impressive wins over Michigan State. Um, Arizona lost yeah. to Colorado earlier earlier this week. Iowa lost. Oh, yeah, Iowa lost today. Uh-huh. Um, um, 
Well, obviously Duke lost. Duke lost Pitt. Yeah. And I think that well, just I think that just about Maryland wraps it up. Oh yeah, that's right. Maryland lost to Purdue. I saw that one coming. Boy, Maryland's falling off the face of the planet. Arizona to Utah, Louisville to Miami, mm-hmm. Louisville lost Miami. Yep. Utah... Kentucky, Kentucky lost to Vanderbilt. That's right. Kentucky lost to Vanderbilt. Two teams I want to bring up in Florida State over Notre Dame. That's it. Yeah. Um, two teams right here that could be dangerous, that I think could make runs in the tournament that are a little more inconspicuous. Utah... Currently ranked 22. That's going to go up because they beat Zona. And I, I, I hope I mentioned them last week. I feel like I, I talked about them a lot. Um, Indiana. Indiana. You're, you're, you've always been high on Indiana. Indiana is very good, and I think they're gonna. I, I, I tour, it went, they will get in the tournament now, um, and they should be ranked higher than 18. Which is ridiculous that they're only 18. Um, first in the Big Ten with a two-game cushion on Michigan State, Maryland, Iowa, and Wisconsin. They're 13 and three in the conference, 23 and six overall. Um, and I firmly believe that they're going to win at Iowa and then beat Maryland to close their season and yeah. quite possibly get a three or four seed. Indiana. Is very to me is very scary team, um, and they beat uh, they crushed Illinois and I believe the Purdue game was this week too, or no that was last week but they also beat Purdue, um, so and just wanted to bring that up, high on Indiana, but overall, again the trend is you're not safe if you're in that in like top five top ten area. It's it's been an unbelievable year of, I mean I don't think there's any other way to describe it, but unbelievable. Just, it's been an unbelievable year of college basketball. This week, right, just off the top of my head, number one Villanova lost, number three Oklahoma lost. Oh no, is Oklahoma yes. four? Well, close enough. Virginia at number three lost early in the week to a Miami. Um, Xavier at five lost. Iowa at 8 lost. Maryland yep. at 10 lost. North Carolina at 7, at seven lost. lost. So, I think... Is Kansas the only top 10 team who didn't lose this week? At number 2? They will be the and new the, number 1. As and they'll drop, or they'll move to 1. But I mean, I, just to think about it, just today, you had 3 top 15, 2 top 10 teams lose. Yeah. Oh, uh, Michigan did Michigan State lose this week? Oh, Arizona at, at nine lost this week. Yeah. So, and all I know is Michigan State blew out Penn State Michigan, by thirty-one today. Michigan State won. That was clean this week. So, this week, seven days, Michigan State at number six and Kansas at number two were the only teams that didn't lose. That, <laughs> I don't know how much more we can say about college basketball this season that is a perfect like representation of what this season's been like yes and that is what will make the short spurts at the top Uh uh-huh and And then that's what's gonna make but i mean it's basically even a cycle really of the same teams is that they keep losing so they never fall out really i mean with the exception maybe duke or Mm -hmm. kentucky or something like that they never really fall out of the top 10 but then they cycle right back up to one and two and three and then lose and then come back up. There there have been a handful of teams, I guess, that have fallen off. Like, I know Texas A&M was really high early on. Texas A&M was the number three team in the country at one point. Both Iowa and Maryland are going to be out of the top ten this coming week. Yes. This bodes really well for um, for March Madness this year. For upsets. Should be great. And will be horrible for both of our brackets, for everybody's brackets. Yep. Though, again, I, I think I said this, I think in the first show, um, this will be the year where all the one seats end up going to the <laughs> going to the final four. 
the most upset friendly season. We'll see no upsets in the tournament. Um, just completely unrelated, and it's college basketball, but unrelated okay. to March Madness. I would just like to point out that yesterday was a senior day at Syracuse. Ah, yes. One of the more interesting games I've ever seen, we played NC State, mm. who isn't a great team. Um, you know, should have won in the first place. You know, they and they did win, as they should have. Mm-hmm. But you had three seniors leaving for Syracuse yesterday. One of whom was a walk on, his name's Christian White. Mm-hmm. Bayheim actually, even with a nine point lead and thirty seconds left, didn't put him in. Really? Which yes, he, he never he never saw the floor, which I thought was very surprising. Uh, you know, we chanted his name and everything, and even you know when, when he's taking the other two seniors, Benajay and Cooney, out, you could you think he takes one of them out, replaces them with Christian White. You know, that way they both get their ovations. White coming in, Benajay, who's you know was the best player on the team mm-hmm. and then um Cooney who's been here his entire career you know both of them get their ovations coming off you'd think that's what would happen but no uh White never saw the floor um wow. but one of one of the more bizarre games because the two seniors who were this going into the season were probably the two most notable players on Syracuse and Michael Benege, who in my has been the best all around player on Syracuse this season, had an unbelievable game. Mm-hmm. Eleven of eighteen shooting, eight of thirteen from beyond the arc. Wow. <laughs> Thirty-four points, four rebounds, six assists, three three blocks. Unbelievable. You I mean you don't win the game without him. Trevor Cooney who is known as a sharpshooter, first shot of the game, air balls it, and later in the game, on a, I'm ta- and I'm talking wide open, so not like one of these, you know, open but leaning, just open, corner three, mm-hmm. hit the side of the backboard. Oh, boy. He was one of eight from the floor, 0 of six from the, the three-point line, no steals, no assists, and finished with five points. Three of which came from the free throw line. Well, uh, that... <laughs> Just two completely opposite performances from the seniors. I see where you're going with that. That <laughs> Just... Oh, my God. But it was a game Syracuse needed to win. I mean, if they lose that, they're out. Because NC you think State... So? Wait, where are they right now, in your, in your opinion? Somewhere between a 9 and a 12, possibly with a playing game. Okay, I could see that. I'd say a nine. If they beat Florida State, lose to UNC, I think they're a nine or a ten. I'd if buy they, that. If they lose to both, I think they're one a bubble team. I honestly wouldn't be completely surprised to see them out. Still the ACC tournament. You have a good yes. run there. And it um, changes things. But I think if you lose to both, if there were no ACC tournament and you lost to both, I think you're at best an 11 with a playing game, and at worst, um, you're out. Okay. I, I find it... I, I, I'm not going to say... What's the kid's name again? White? The freshman, Christian White. Christian White. I'm yes. not going to say it bothers me that he didn't get in, because that's the nature of Division One sports. I but, thought it was surprising. Because yeah, I, thought, I agree with that. I think it's surprising. Because... Because the people who he put in, the two kids who he put in to replace Benajay and Cooney, he put in Tyler Roberson, who's our incredible rebounding power forward, to replace Benajay. And when Cooney came off, he put in Caleb Joseph, who was a top 100 recruit last year, was thought to be you know the point guard of the future, and has really really fallen off the face of the earth to the point where, you know, there's been rumors surfacing of he, you know, hates it. He's kind of, you know, selfish, doesn't get along with players and coaches. Um, Obviously, you can't confirm any of that, so I don't know if it's true, but that's what you hear. And it's to the point where he plays about as much as the walk-ons, even though he's a full scholarship player. Wow. You know, he has, this season, um, 
he is averaging. I'll pull this up real quick. Okay. Give he is averaging. He is averaging. Under six minutes a game. Okay, so why not just put in Christian White if you? Put... That is my point. Is that if <laughs> Joseph is this, you know, I don't want to say bad player, but not a good point guard. Uh-huh. He doesn't get along with people, and you have just you know you he went from being your second string point guard to the point where you don't even put him in ever. He's averaging point nine points per game this season. Like, wow, what? Why, why not put in um, you should you should have put in uh, White and that's my opinion but no, I, I'm also, I also haven't been the coach of Syracuse basketball for the past 40 years so that, that makes sense to me but I yeah I, I, I guess you can't really question well of course you can question Bayheim. I don't I that seems a little that seems a little strange but I, I guess 39 point game is it's not like it was a 30 point game. So, yeah, but I don't know. N- N- 9 still does seem that, okay. that was those were that. my two reflections from other than the fact that it's been a great year of watching basketball. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. College it's going to be interesting. NBA. It's going to be interesting what they what Syracuse is like next year at least because obviously you le- you lose two you know, guys, the go-to guys on the team in Benege and Cooney, hmm. but you got to believe that Lydon, Malachi Richardson are coming back. Yeah, Tyus Battle is coming in as a top 35 recruit next year. Mm. They'll get a couple new... They have another power forward, Matthew Moyer, coming in. So it's going to be a very different team, and I'm not sure not sure what to make of it just yet. But again, we aren't even finished with this year. It's not like Syracuse is... You know, we're not, we aren't prepping for next year yet. We are prepping for getting into the tournament. That's true. Okay. Um... Four verticals. You want to do some four verticals before we head out? Sure. Okay. Anything else college hoops related this week, or well, I know we'll talk about that a little. I have up. one. I have one college uh, basketball game on my verticals. I I know what it is. I yes. Very much, so w- why don't you start? Why don't you start? My first vertical, Duke UNC on Saturday. The rematch. The, uh, the fifth. The rematch, I have no idea how it's going to possibly live up the first one, except in my opinion with a Syracuse or a Syracuse, UNC win. A Syracuse yeah. win. Syracuse is going to somehow find a way to win the game. Um, but it's going to, as they always are, it's going to be a heck of a game. So. Yeah, I, well, I, let's, listen, I'm going to, um, wait, that's uh, Saturday night, correct? Yes. Saturday night. Well, I'm going to follow with a, a, a lesser college basketball game. Uh, on Tuesday night, March the 1st, Indiana at Iowa, Big Ten, 9 o'clock. I think this is the game where Indiana proves that they are... I, I still think Michigan State is the best team in the Big Ten, but Indiana is top three in the conference, and a game that also proves that Iowa is not in the same class or on the same tier as the top teams in that conference. Not yet. And not there yet. are pro- there are program trending upwards but not yet. Not yet. And so I think Indiana proves it with a win on the road against Iowa. All right. Second vertical. Mhm. Um and then first spring training game well for the first real spring training game. Um for me it's the Yankees Tigers. Mm-hmm. Luis Severino was announced as a starter. Obviously, nothing's won and lost except for a meaningless baseball game, but uh-huh. it's great to see the guys back out there again. Well, the, the outcome is meaningless, but the, yeah, but the game I, itself. Yeah, I mean, you want to. Honestly, I love spring training games because I love seeing young kids and players, uh-huh. you know, battling. I'm not there to see, you know, A Rod hit a home run. I'm there to see whether or not Aaron Judge is the real deal, mm-hmm. so I guess. Um,. But that, I mean, when you think about it, going back to a couple of years ago, young, Ner- young Hervis Salarte, he won a roster spot out of spring training. Unbelievable spring training, made the roster due to injuries, was put into the starting lineup, had an unbelievable start to the season, was batting, was leading the American League in batting average as late as like June something. I remember um, that. And then 
obviously got traded up Padres in the Chase Headley uh, trade, but things happen in spring training, so it's it's good to see baseball back. Good to see baseball being played. Um, hopefully, no major injuries on the first day of spring training. That that would be good, but uh, it's going to be great to see. Yes, um, I'm gonna. I, I will admit that, w- like the the f- last week or two of spring training, I kind of get, you know, a little a little over it and ready for the. For I say the a little bored. Games. Yeah, but uh, the first few weeks certainly. So I'm gonna. I kind of. I don't really have anything else to add um, because I'm just gonna follow you spring training. Wednesday, my two teams, Red Sox hosting the Twins at one in that Inter-Fort Myers matchup that we see multiple times every year. They always open up with the Twins. Um, Makes sense. Actually, technically, they always open up with Boston BC College. BC and Northeastern. Correct. So, But the first major league team they play is Min- always Minnesota and um, the other one. This is this is a two-part Ford vertical. Um Seattle and San Diego. All right. Seattle being my other team, and they always play San Diego because they share the same facility, or at least they sense. have. Yeah. So, in Peoria. So yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Uh, baseball is back. All right. And go ahead. Continue. Third vertical. The Wednesday night, actually same night as the first spring training games. The in an old original six rivalry, mm. Blackhawks take on the Red Wings. Um, should, bound to be some good hockey. Western Conference leaders and the Blackhawks. Um, they obviously aren't in the same conference anymore, but they will be when uh, when Quebec and I. I guess, I guess it's going to be Las Vegas get their teams. Um, we'll see. Uh, Minis- uh, not Minnesota. Detroit will be back in the Western Conference as as they should be. Yes, as they I completely agree as they should be. Even though um, that's not the case in the NBA for either of true. them. Um. But it should be a good game. Detroit may not be leading the uh, Eastern Conference, but still a very good team in their own right with it, 73 points. It's, it's a rivalry game anyway. Yes, it's a rivalry game. Two good teams. I love the uh, Red Wings jerseys from the Stadium Series against oh, the Avalanche. Were those night. nice? They, they were nice. They were the, very nice. Well, they were like kind of like an alternate jersey, but red with like white across, but they used the white gloves, and they looked fantastic. The big white D on the jersey is very yes. nice. I, I, I completely agree. Okay, taking it to soccer, Barclays Premier League, no Champions League this week. Um, Liverpool hosting Manchester City on Wednesday afternoon. A lot of stuff on Wednesday. A lot, a lot of stuff on Wednesday. On Wednesday. Uh, Man City had their game postponed this weekend, um, but they continue to chase Leicester City, who did win, as we talked about a few Yes, they ago. did. Uh, who remain in first Gotta place? Got to keep that bet. Remarkably, I I want Leicester City to win. I, mean, I do too. The top of the league this year more than anything, but well, maybe not more than anything, but it's up there. Because again, and if it gets if when the end of the season gets closer and it actually seems like it might happen, I'm sure we'll talk about it more. But this would be the great one. Act now, the greatest. Like underdog story, not to Nate though, because soccer doesn't matter. No, I, I know, I know, it's <laughs> ridiculous. Especially with the different in finance. Did you? Oh my, I, I have. I, 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 I'll bring it up next week. But like, there, are, especially financially, like the different, like the difference in Man the amount City. of money. Man City compared to Leicester. It yeah. is ridiculous. It is absurd. It's something like, and I. I don't know if this is completely true, but it's something along the lines of the top, like the one contract on Manchester City is equal to the entire budget <laughs> that Leicester City has, and they still uh, they're still in first place, which is amazing. But anyway, uh, Liverpool, Manchester City, two of the best best teams in the Premier League on Wednesday afternoon. I love Jurgen Klopp, the uh, the, the Liverpool manager. Yeah. Yes, I love him. He's fantastic. All right. Final vertical for you. Go ahead. My final one yes. is, is on sports related. On sports related? It's two. Uh, it's March 1st, actually. We forgot the date there for a second. Mm-hmm. And is the it, story it, that's. Go ahead. No, go ahead. What? Sorry. 
I, I was just gonna. Well, no, yeah. I, I I realized that you. I was gonna ask before you said March first. I was gonna ask if it was the Oscars, which already happened. No, well they're on right now. Well, for I'm us, yes. We're missing the Oscars. For those of you wondering, the due to director, the Revenant won uh, best director, and as far as I know, we are still. We do not know if Leo has won yet. Mm -hmm. We we haven't reached that point. It's coming up though. Um, he, he he probably will because of the weak year. Mm -hmm. But uh, when looking at Tuesday, big story of the year is the 2016 presidential election here in the United States. It's mm. Super Tuesday. Um, it's multiple states for the first time on the same or have primaries and caucuses on the same day. Mm. Alabama, Arkansas, Colorado, Georgia, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas. Vermont and Virginia, with Republican caucuses being held in Alaska and Wyoming, and then one participating territory, the American Samoa, has its uh, Democratic caucus. Mm -hmm. So, big day as far as the election goes. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Some southern states, but yet, you know, you have your Vermonts and Massachusetts is in there. Um, so, Ohio's a big state. So, should be interesting. Yes. All right. I'll bring it back to sports one more time. Okay. A um, though politics are are very important. Um, a battle of two of the best teams in the Western Conference, and also a battle of two of the worst logos in NBA history: uh, Oklahoma City and the LA Clippers. Uh, potential playoff preview, maybe if the Clippers slip a little bit, but still two very good teams. Uh, Clippers have given. The Warriors some trouble so far, even though that is a rivalry game. So, um, obviously, would would be more difficult. But two of the best teams from uh, uh, out of the Western Conference, maybe a playoff preview, should be interesting. Should be interesting. I know I I would say Thunder at Warriors, but I quite frankly think that Thunder at Clippers will be a better game. So, oh, so I'll go with that to. Uh, finish off four verticals and I guess finish off the show um, do you have anything else any, anything else to add before we leave alright no I know exactly <laughs> what we're going to start next week with though what are we just, well, I think okay. I've just been actually been discussing it with a few of my friends here Just I just want to hear your we'll do it for next week and we're not because I have a debate about it is using your college teams and, and your so for example if like Alabama football has always been my favorite team as far as football, but yes. also including Syracuse football, and then ranking all of your teams. Right. So, in for terms example, of like favoritism. The, yes. Which one are you the most passionate? If you could choose one team to win. So you're just going through, you know, the four major sports. Wow. And then your college teams. So that's what we're going to start next week on. Oh right? my gosh, that uh, that's it's, right, it's yes. difficult. It, that is. Difficult. I mean, I have. A, I, I already I have, have my, my I already have my one. answer, but well, uh, I maybe have, I, I have my one, but I after that, that's where it gets interesting is ranking the that's the bottom ones. Dang, yeah. So, oh, we're definitely gonna do that. All right, uh, all right. Next all week, right. that's what that's what we do. Okay, uh, unless something I say, unless, insane happens in unless North the world Carolina. explodes. Or so, well, we won't have a show if the world explodes. Hey, you never but, know. We can yeah. do it from space. Well, we'll 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 see. We'll I don't know. Cross that bridge when we come to it. Yes, that's right. Okay, I guess that'll do it uh, for the third episode of the Chirp. We'll be back next week, and then after next, the show after next week will be the March Madness preview, I guess. And we'll be home. Yes, we'll be we'll be home, and we'll have our first guest on the show won't we that we will we will mr point mr oh basketball hoops insider eric point come and join us coming two weeks join from now. The yeah but now again all right next week we'll do that and um we'll do the favoritism the favorite list and we'll do uh i'm sure we'll do do north carolina or something and that's true sure. yeah okay all right all right uh i guess i'll do it and um yeah for for aiden doyle I'm Noah Johnson, and we will we'll see you next week.